Hello guys, welcome to my another modeling tutorial and in this tutorial I'm going to be modeling um, this type of flashlight and I just search up for some reference images as usual and um, I think I'm going to be modeling this type of flashlight and it's not going to be exactly like one of those but I'm just going to use it as a reference so let's start by making a cylinder and um, probably I want more resolution this time so I'm just gonna add more subdivision nexus and we don't really need those caps so let's remove it for now and let's rotate it by 90 degrees and we're ready to go and what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna start by making a base shape for the actual high poly mesh so what you can do is just create whatever shape you have in your mind there's no right or wrong wrong in this so you can just keep going so you can just make it um, longer or shorter thicker or thinner you can just mm, get your best proportion or design that you have in your mind so probably I'm gonna go with this type of design and when you're ready is time to add more details so I'm using knife tool to cut this type of edge look and you can actually press middle mouse button to cut in the exact middle so you can get this type of result and what I'm going to do now is actually I want to flatten some of those faces so I'm just going to select those parts and actually I can flatten this area by extruding it once and let's scale it down a little bit to make it easier to select and I'm just gonna select it and you can just scale it down all the way to zero to make it perfectly flat and do the same thing on the bottom and just snap it right there and if you actually do this, um, it's gonna mess everything up because there are some overwrapping vertices right here and in the every corner basically. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna select every vertices around them and do merge. So now all of the overwrapping vertices are merged, so no problem at all. So we're good to go again. Uh, sometimes you see this kind of sharp edges in that case you can actually go to mesh display and do soften or harden edges and it will automatically distinguish off the um, edges and smooth or sharpen it um, sometimes it goes wrong like this and in this case you can just manually harden edge like that so it's got no problem but we're gonna add more details anyway so I wouldn't really care about that for now so I got the shape and next thing I wanna do is more details here probably I'm gonna extrude this area and before we do that we can actually bevel this to make a little gap between those two edges so I think that will be enough so now we can select those base loops and add thickness something like that cool now I'm gonna be adding some pattern on the on the surface and 
if you actually take a look at the reference image, it looks quite complex, but it is actually quite easy to create. Um, but you should be extra careful as well. So what I'm going to do is actually I'm going to duplicate the original mesh and hide one another because um, there's there are some risks, so I just want to make sure that I have a backup mesh. And also, I this part is going to be separated from the main base mesh, so uh, just to make sure that I don't lose the main part, which is more important. So I'm just going to delete every part that don't need any patterns including that you can do select similar to select those four I accidentally deleted this part or yeah it's got some failure here maybe I accidentally extruded that but it's an easy fix fortunately so let's check everything's fine and what I have to do is I need to make sure that every edge loop has even gaps so I just want to add some more cuts here by using the knife tool and middle mouse click and now we are good to go let's delete history before we do this and you can do add divisions but make sure you select it linearly so if you do that you can actually add divisions on different directions so I just want to get a square shape as close as possible something like that and um, now let's delete history again and um, next thing I'm gonna do is poke so we get this kind of cross shape on every faces and then what we can do is we can select some of those horizontal and vertical edges and do select similar if you do that it will select all of the similar edges so let's keep doing this there are some other ways to do this, but that doesn't work always, so I'm just gonna go with some more reliable way. Seems okay. Now when you're done, what you can do is you can extrude it obviously and you need to make sure you turn off turn off this kit faces together option and if you actually add some offset just a little bit let's say 0 0.005 okay now I'm gonna inverse selection and delete rest of them um, something's wrong yeah I actually didn't select all of them let me do this again make sure you select everything and extrude it again keep this off and add an offset uh, 0 
now inverse selection and delete the rest of them. I'm not really sure why they delete everything. There's some glitches there, I guess. Um, let's inverse selection again, then, and we can actually extrude it again. Gonna take a little bit. And add some thickness. Probably 0 0.01. This process is taking too long. I I guess this geometry is not so clean. So we should deal with that. Yeah, let's go with that. And I'm just gonna delete history. Hopefully, it's gonna get a, a bit faster. And now, if if we actually show the hidden object again, now we got pattern on the surface. And we couldn't delete those um, gap surfaces because of the glitch or whatever it was. And also I need to fix this mistake. okay at the moment so let's keep going so I think I want to add more details here so if I can actually extract this so it's got separated from the original mesh and um, what I want to do is um, I want to select um, something like that it's like some of those um, faces evenly to create a gear-like shape. But it's, it doesn't really match. Um, let's try another method which is boolean. It's not, not the best way but it's worth trying so let's fill all the holes on the geometry so the boolean works better and let's say use this sphere I mean cylinder to get the shape maybe sphere wor would work better I just want to make some interesting shape So I'm just going to create a sphere and in the edit mode I'm just going to raise this up like that. Alright, that's going to work. So the pivot stays in the center but the object is raised. 
that's good and we can add more divisions probably three times actually not divisions actually we need to smooth this sorry about that and we are ready to make some rotation here so I'm just gonna do it several times like that and now I can select every spheres we created and combine them and delete history now we're ready for the boolean so if we actually do the difference we got that pretty cool so now I can get rid of those um, faces that we created for the boolean and let's see how it fits probably I want to make it a bit shorter and if you're using my 2020 you can actually retopologize it but I'm currently using my 2018 so I can't really do that but still is pretty useful so let's try to add something as but it doesn't work always this mesh is not that clean so that's why retopo is neat necessary um, so I'm just gonna try to add thickness this way just extrude it once and you can actually scale it down or try to circularize it and um, yeah I think it works pretty well probably will scale it down a bit further than that and extrude it inwards we can actually snap it to that And um, I don't think the bridge will be possible. But let's try. Yeah, it's not working. The edge count should match to the opponent, but it's not matching at the moment, so. I'm just gonna do the extrude to you know just hide the gap between the mainframe and bevel this edge a little bit that's good enough so now you can probably um, and more details on the back and probably we can do something else in the front as well mm. let's cut here and we can simply do some extrusion technique like that you can um, turn off kit faces together and add some offset and extrude it again and add thickness to make this kind of tactical gear shape I really like this type of design as well so it's a fairly quick way to add this type of detail you might think this is um, too much you can basically scale it down like that or if you want something different you can actually extrude it inwards to make this type of design um, is totally up to you
So I think that's gonna work. And also I wanna bevel this area as well to make it crisp. Probably two or three will be enough. If we're gonna smooth this match, two is definitely enough. And let's work in the back. Now I'm gonna do the same thing. Basically, I wanna bevel these edges and um, I'm gonna extrude this inwards. And this is where the button should be. So I'm just gonna make a little space for the button. And actually, I'm gonna do that. And extrude it again. And fill hole to finish. Now obviously we need to do some bevel. For these edges I actually want a bit of more <laughs> angular design like that. It's kind of stiff cut and um, now we can do another bevel on those edges we just beveled and go with smaller fraction and lower segments two will be enough or three all right and now for those parts i also gonna do bevel but This time, I'm not gonna do that type of bevel, just sharp bevel. So, that's it. Now, for the button, we can actually create another cylinder or, or probably, yeah, cylinder or sphere. But I just wanna want some angular design, so I just, I'm just gonna stick to this cylinder. But you can um, go with more rounded design if you want. So this time, again, I'm gonna add more division because I don't think I'm gonna smooth it. Oops. Okay, so now I'm gonna do another bevel. There are different things you can do. You can. Uh, add more segments to make it more rounded. Like I told you before, you can go with sphere or you can add more segments. Got two options. I want those areas to be a bit rounded, so I'm just gonna add a bit more segments. If I actually sa isolate this mesh, you're gonna see more details back there. Yeah, more segments there, and I'm gonna select this part to extrude it. And you're not gonna see this in the final render, so I'm not gonna um, pay too much attention to that. But yeah, that's basically it. So if I just put it in appropriate position, that's done. Now let's see what else we can do.
Yeah, looks um, pretty much finished. One last thing I want to do is um, another boolean actually. So I'm just gonna duplicate this one and isolate it with that cube over there and um, make sure that everything is filled. I'm just gonna do fill hall there. This part has already been filled, so not, no, not a problem. And um, I just wanna make a cube a bit smaller. And make sure it's big enough to cover that entire surface. So something like that and I probably want to narrow it down to make it more sharper, basically. All right. This time we don't really need that much resolution since um, I want some sharp angles. Alright, now I'm going to move the pivot by pressing D button and you can just snap it to the exact middle of the cylinder and try to rotate it. You can press Shift D to repeat the duplication. Now you got that. So again, I'm going to combine them and delete history. Now we're ready to do the boolean. And again, difference should work. Okay, that was way more interesting. I'm not really sure that would be really practical, but it looks cool. That's good enough for me. So I'm just going to delete that and we can actually turn off isolation and let's get rid of the original I mean hide the original mesh just want to keep it as a backup and probably I want to push it a bit to the back and yeah probably that's better Alright, that will be fine. And now, finally, I just want to carve in some letter here. But you can also use textures if you want. It is totally up to you, but I just want to try to carve in some 3D text. So. Before I do that, I want to save it actually. So let's get started by creating another 3D type mesh. And I just want to uh, save something like bright. And get the right font you want. Yeah, I think I like that one. So, a couple of extra things you want to do is you actually want to get rid of the extrude, extrude divisions because we don't really need them. And delete history, obviously, and we are ready to go. And you can actually rotate it and scale it down to just fit, fit it there and center the pivot obviously and make sure it over wraps because we're gonna do another boolean 
I'm just gonna do the same thing in the bottom. Something like that. And combine them as well. Now again, I'm gonna isolate them to work on it a bit easier. And again, I'm just gonna temporarily fill that area. And now we're ready to do the boolean. Again, booleans and difference. And just carves it in something like that, which is what I want. Cool. Now we can delete the history again. Now we got a clean mesh. Actually, I want to do some. Uh, I accidentally selected that. I actually want to extrude this in. To make the gap a bit more natural, I guess. So if I actually do that, it's basically almost done. The last part is the lens in the front and that will be the last, really. So again, I am going to extrude this part a little bit. And fill hole and bevel this area. And for the lens, I am going to start with a cylinder, I mean, a uh, sphere. You can also start with a cylinder, but yeah, it's easier this way. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to select one edge loop and make it smaller on Z axis. And again, we can extrude it in and in and extrude it again and merge to center. The reason I do this is because when we smooth it, you're not gonna see any kind of weird distortion in the center. One way to avoid them is to add more cuts throughout the surface. And yeah, that's pretty much it, I guess. So I can just fit this in like that. Um, we got a tactical flashlight ready to be rendered. I mean, ready to be shaded. And uh, let's select everything and group them. Probably you, you can rename them if you want. And delete history freeze transformation, center pivot, do whatever you want to do. Make sure it's perfectly clean for the shading. And yeah, probably save the scene. And now I'm going to move on to the shading part. And it's not going to take too long because I'm not going to do tons of texturing and crazy stuff. I'm just going to use um, presets mostly so it's gonna, not gonna be a big deal so I'm just gonna use Arnold shape Arnold renderer for the rendering and I'm gonna use AI standard surface most of all and let's name this AI metal and what you can do is you can increase metalness and 
reduce roughness or you can even increase it you're not gonna see anything in the viewport at the moment um, so let's create a light first I'm just gonna make a procedural studio lighting um, which is very useful when it comes to this type of product rendering when you don't have any HDRI um, I will recommend using this method so what you can do is you can create a ramp and hook it up to the actual color of the environment and light and you can change the ramp type to UV ramp and start to um, make this type of pattern so you're gonna see that it is actually creating that kind of tile which will look like a studio environment when it comes to you know the actual color map of the studio um, environment light so you can either make this linear or none so you get more sharper reflections um, but maybe linear will work fine and uh, you can increase resolution but yeah I'm not gonna do that because I wanna save some time rendering this also it's gonna slow you down in the viewport as well so let's turn off the visibility in the camera and these and in the viewport and that that is what I want and if we actually take a look at this it's very metallic at the moment we probably want to apply the same material to most of the most of the part and for the lens you might want to apply some glass texture I mean glass material uh, there's a pretty nice um, preset for this so I'm just gonna go to preset and select glass and rename it to AI glass or something and one important thing is to turn off opaque in Arnold session in the actual shape node so I can just turn off and it will be no problem rendering out in the final render so I'm not really sure what's gonna look like in the final render but let's try it so I'm just gonna center the pivot of the group and I can do some crazy rotation like that Get a right angle like that. Make sure you can change the camera setting to make the overscan a bit different. Alright. If we actually render this out. Obviously, we need to increase the roughness of the material. So we can try higher roughness level, and probably reduce specular weight to make it a bit less intense. And this time it's too high. So what you can do is find the best value for this. Actually, I forgot to change the base color of the flashlight, so that's the reason why it looks kind of washed out. 
and now it's gonna look a bit better I hope light is too dim so let's increase the intensity of the light now we're gonna see better results something like that and if you think the lighting is um, lighting looks too cheap what you can do is maybe you can try out different type of ramp maybe diagonal and what you can do is actually you can add some noise with low frequency so it will generate this type of mad lighting environment which works pretty well not always but yeah Lighting looks a bit messy, but uh, you can um, find some professionally generated HDRI so you can get some better results. Or what I recommend doing is you can actually add another secondary light in the Arnold tab. You're going to see area light, for example, and this will make things better. Um, let's say increase intensity and the exposure if we do that you're gonna see a lot more crisp result and sometimes you need to increase exposure even further than that and you can actually compare it to the one without the skydome light and just see how the light reacts and show the skydome light again Now if we go to the metal shader again Yeah, I think it's better to increase the roughness since we got not that good lighting environment Alright and you can increase the metalness all the way to 1 right and at the moment it looks perfectly new but if you want uh, some more details on scratches and wear offs there's something you can do um, for example, AI curvature node, which will identify every sharp and crisp edges. Um, let me try this out. And you might want to use the default setting. Let's try that. If you do this, um, you're going to see that some of the edges are white and yeah it's actually pretty cool that um, you can generate this effect without doing any texturing in Substance Painter or whatever 
software you're using. And that actually does a pretty good job. And yeah, it looks pretty okay to me, so let's try to increase the resolution for the final render. And actually, I don't have the Photoshop license at the moment, so um, I'm just gonna show you a quick way to add a background in Arnold without having to go into the any other third party software. Um, I just want a simple gradient background, which is pretty dark. Something like that. So you can just um generate your own background or download it or whatever and you can render this out if you actually click on this gear icon it will bring you the setting and you can actually um, choose BG image and you can actually load up the image you downloaded um, right which is this one. And that's basically how it works. Let's try some different backgrounds. We can go with um, just flat color like this one. I think I like this one better. So this is the tutorial done basically and you can um, do some color management for example. Um, yeah. So this is my final result and thank you for watching this tutorial and please subscribe and like this video to check out more, more tutorials like this one and thank you for watching and see you again.